So what we're going to take a look at in this first lesson is we're going to set up a controller specifically so we can take a look at what we're doing right now with our exceptions and any errors in our application. So what we'll do is we'll just right click our controllers folder and create a new class and we're going to call this one buggy controller. Its purpose is simply to return errors so that we can see what we get back from various different responses in our application and we'll need to derive from our base API controller here and we'll need to give this a constructor and we're going to inject our data context inside here. So we'll say data context and context and then just say using API data and then we're going to initialize the field from parameter as well. So what we're going to do in here is we're going to generate several different methods that are all going to return various kind of responses that are not successful. And the first one we'll do, we'll just add an HTTP GET and we'll say auth as the root parameter here. So when we're accessing this particular endpoint, we're going to go to API buggy and then auth. And what we'll do is we'll just create some simple methods. We're not going to worry about asynchronous code or anything like that inside here. We're just going to keep things as straightforward as possible because this is obviously not going to form part of our production application. And what we're going to return from this particular method is a string. And we're just going to say get secret. And inside here, let's just bring in what we actually need as well. So we need ASP.NET Core MVC for this. And what we're going to do here is just return some text called secret text. As simple as that. But what we'll do is we'll just put on an authorize attribute into this as well. So let's we require the users to be authenticated. And the purpose of this is to test our 401 unauthorized responses. What I'm going to do, because we're going to need a few similar looking methods inside here, is I'm just going to copy this down four more times and make some adjustments in each of these methods. So the next one we're going to take a look at, we'll just say not dash found and we'll just call this method gets not found. And what we'll typically do in our controllers is we'll try and get something. So we'll say var thing is equal to the context and users. And what we'll use is the find method. And we'll look for something that we know for sure is not going to exist. We're not going to have any users with an ID of minus one. And then what we'll do, we'll check the status of thing. And if thing is equal to null, then what we'll do is we'll return not found from this. And if we do somehow manage to find this, we'll return whatever the thing actually is. The next one we'll add will be a server dash error. And we'll just call this get server error. And in this case, once again, we'll attempt to find something or we'll create a variable called thing and we'll set this equal to context.users.find and once again we'll just try and find something that we know doesn't exist. But what we want to do here is generate an exception from this particular method. So what we'll say is we'll add another variable and we'll say this is the thing to return and what we'll do is we'll set this thing and then we'll try and execute a method on something. And in this case, what we'll try and do is set the thing to a string. Now, when we use the find method, if we take a look at its description, it's going to attempt to find an entity with the given primary key. Now, the primary key that we're trying to find is minus one. We know this doesn't exist. And if it's found, it's attached to the context and returned. And if no entity is found, then null is returned. So what we're going to get inside this is going to be null. And when we try and execute a method on null, such as this, then what we're going to generate from this is a null reference exception. Now, these are fairly common and you do create code sometimes where you don't receive the parameter that you're expecting. And when you try and execute a method on something that's null, then you'll always get a null reference exception. So we'll just use this as an example 
of a server exception. And if we do somehow manage to find this, then we'll return the thing to return. And to be technically accurate, we don't have any complaints actually from our controllers, but what we are returning from this technically would be an app user. So what we'll do is we'll just swap this for app user and we should do the same in the one above as well. And like I say, we're not getting any complaints from the compilers there, but let's just be technically accurate inside here. Interestingly, now we do get an error. And for this one, because we're converting this to a string, this does actually need to say string, in this case, not app user. And then what we'll do is we'll return a bad dash request. And in this case, what we'll do is we'll say get bad request. And all we're going to do from here is we won't add any logic in. We're just simply going to return a bad request and just add a message in saying this was not a good request. And I don't have any use for this last one that I copied in here. So let's just remove that. So we've got four requests in here that are going to return various different errors. And what we'll also do is we'll head to our register DTO. And what we want to do here, just so we've got some additional things that are output if we don't meet some validation requirements, we'll actually add a string length validator on this. And what we'll do is we'll say that we'll give this a maximum length of eight and a minimum length equal to four. And we're just adding an additional validator here so that we'll see additional responses when we hit this particular method. We won't create an additional method in here because we can just simply try and register a user that doesn't need the validation to see the other kind of error that we need to take a look at at the moment. So what we'll do now is we'll head over to Postman and we'll test all of our different endpoints in our buggy controller to see what we currently get back without us doing anything regarding error handling. So we'll head over to Postman and inside section seven of our Postman collection, we've got five different requests that are gonna hit our different endpoints and we'll see what we get back for each of these different kind of errors. So if I click send, and this one's gonna go to our server error, so we'd expect to get a null reference exception back from this. And if we click send, then sure enough, we get a null reference exception and that's what we'd expect. We're not going to go into detail about these different errors just now. We're just going to simply make sure that we're going to get responses back from all of these and see what they say. So we've got an auth error here. If I click send, we're not sending up the authentication header here. So what this should return to us is a 401. And if we click that, then sure enough, we get a 401 unauthorized and we don't see anything inside the body. We've also got a get not found error. So we're going to hit our not found endpoint it's going to look for the thing and it's going to return not found, which of course it will do because it's not going to be able to find it. And this time we get a slightly different kind of response. We get a 404 not found and we've got an object that's returned with various pieces of information. We've got the type, we've got the title, we've got the status code and a trace ID as well. And if we take a look at the bad request and we click send, then what we get back from this is the 400 bad request and the text that we added inside here. And if we take a look at the get validation error, and what we're doing here is we're just sending up an empty body to our register endpoint. And if we click send, then we get yet another different response back from our server with the errors array inside here as well. And just to test that the validation of the password length is applied, what we'll do is we'll just go back to section four and click on the body and I'll just have an empty name for the username and I'll fail to meet the password length validation and click send. And this time we get a different kind of response. We get the field password must be a string with a minimum length of four and a maximum length of eight. Okay, so this is all very interesting and we know what errors we're gonna get back. And what we'll do next is we'll take a look at how we can handle errors. And very specifically, we're going to take a look at our server exception, the exception that we send back in this case.